Hi guys, we are missing you guys here at the Clay Center, but we're gonna bring you a little bit of science uh, at home. Um, this first experiment that I'm going to do is going to use your observation skills. You guys are gonna be my mini scientists, my junior scientists, and help me make some observations about what's happening. So what is an observation? Let's, let's talk about that first. Um, an observation is just basically using your five senses to make, uh, to learn new things about the world around you. So um, we can use our sense of sight to, to find out things. We can use our sense of hearing, taste, touch, smell. Um, today, you guys are mainly gonna be using your sense of sight to find out what's happening uh, with this experiment. Um, today, we're gonna be doing an experiment using uh, basically the same chemicals for the experiment, but we'll be changing it up just a little bit so that you can tell me what you notice is different about each experiment. All right, so since we're working with chemicals, I have my lab coat on and I'm gonna go ahead and put my glasses, my safety glasses on and my gloves. You would think pink was my favorite color because of all of my dress here, but it's actually not. Okay, now let's experiment. Are you ready to use those observation skills to find out what's happening? All right, the first chemical that I'm going to use today is called hydrogen peroxide. How many of you guys know what we use hydrogen peroxide for just every day? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Okay, so hydrogen peroxide in our everyday life, if you have it around your house, is used to um, clean out cuts and scrapes on your fingers. Um, some people actually use it for mouthwash. So it has, and then some people use it to, uh, as a cleaner for, you know, I don't know, cleaning your bathroom or whatever. So it has a lot of different purposes around your house. The hydrogen peroxide that we're using today is about 10 times stronger than the peroxide that you have probably have in your house. So this hydrogen peroxide actually would not be great to put on a cut or a scrape. We're gonna put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in our Erlenmeyer flask, just enough to, to coat the bottom of our flask. Then I'm gonna set it aside. All right, the next chemical that I'm gonna add is potassium iodide. Um, you might have heard of iodine. It's kind of like a uh, orangish red uh, liquid that they put on you before, a lot of times before surgery to help uh, sanitize your skin. Now, what we're gonna do is I've measured out a little bit of potassium iodide, and when I mix the potassium iodide with the hydrogen peroxide, you are going to watch a chemical reaction. Something's gonna happen. So what I need you guys to do is to use those observation skills and come up with maybe a short list of things that are happening during this experiment. Are you guys ready? Okay, here we go. Use that eyesight. Whoa. So what are some of the things that are happening? First, I see some bubbles happening here at the bottom. Um, and I see some steam rising out of the top of my Erlenmeyer flask. And if you were here, you could feel that the bottom of my flask is hot. It's pretty hot. So what we have here is called an exothermic chemical reaction. So that, the mixture of those two chemicals produced heat. And you might have also noticed that the bubbles uh, at the bottom kind of turned like an orangish yellowy color. Um, so we had a color change as well when our chemicals mixed together. And now you'll notice that our mixture is back to, to clear. So we had bubbles, we had a color change, we had a temperature change, and we had some, some steam coming up out of our uh, out of our experiment there. So those are some of the things that you should have observed while you were watching that. All right, so that was the first experiment. Pretty cool, right? 
Now we're going to change out our flasks and we're going to use two of the same ingredients. We're going to use that hydrogen peroxide again and we're going to use potassium iodide again. But this time we're going to add another ingredient. So I'm going to add my hydrogen peroxide into my flask. Again, just enough to cover the bottom of my flask. Uh, put a little bit more in there. All right. So we have a little bit in there. This time, I'm going to add a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid. All right, so if you remember from our first experiment, which we like to call genie in a bottle, because it looks like a genie coming up out of a bottle, you'll remember that there were several things that happened. There was a color change, there was a temperature change, um, and there were also some bubbles. Now that I've added soap to my hydrogen peroxide, what do you think are going to happen with those bubbles? Do you think that they'll calm and go like they did with the genie in a bottle? Or do you think that maybe something different might happen this time? I guess there's one way to find out, right? All right, so for this experiment, I'm going to use um, potassium iodide again, and I'm also, I'm just going to use it dry right out of the bottle, the same, I did, the same as I did with the genie in a bottle. And we're going to make some observations. All right. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Whoa. So definitely something different happening this time. <laughs> Those bubbles did not come and go this time. They actually got trapped inside of that soap and have made a pretty good amount of foam. <laughs> So that was fun. Whoa, and it just keeps going. But some of the same things are happening in this experiment that happened in Genie in a Bottle. Yes, it looks a little bit different, but you can still, I can still see some steam rising off. We still had a temperature change. Um, you'll notice if I turn this around, we still had a little bit of a color change. Some of the bubbles down there are uh, yellow, yellowy orange. And we definitely had those bubbles, but because we added the soap, the bubbles created some foam that time. All right, so since this is kind of a mess, I'm going to move it over to the side and get a new tray for the next part. Okay, and our final experiment, again, we're going to be using similar ingredients, the same chemicals. So we're using a little bit more hydrogen peroxide for this one. Now this one's a little uh, trickier. You'll have to use, your observation skills will have to be keen for this one. So we have our hydrogen peroxide poured into the flask. Again, we're going to use Dawn because that experiment was pretty cool. That result was pretty cool. So we're going to use our Dawn dishwashing liquid. Swirl that around a little bit. Now here's something to note too, if you're really using your keen observation skills. Every time you add, you mix two chemicals together, not a chemical reaction doesn't always happen whenever you mix two, chemical react, two chemicals together. So just now we have hydrogen peroxide in our flask and we have Dawn dishwashing liquid and not a whole lot is happening. We pretty much just have a powerful cleaner at this point. Um, so this time we're going to use our potassium iodide, but it is dissolved in water this time. So we have a potassium iodide solution rather than the dry potassium iodide. This is where your keen observation skills are going to come in. And see if you notice, does it react faster? Does it react slower? Does it make more bubbles? Does it explode out of the flask? What might happen with this experiment? I guess we'll find out, right? Okay, here we go, guys. 
So that's different already. It's very slow, sort of creeping out, but you can definitely see the color change. Whoa, so many bubbles that time. Oh my goodness. You can really see the steam coming up off of it. <laughs> It's growing so big. Oh, wow. So you noticed there that the reaction time was a little slower than it was with the, the first group of ingredients, but the reaction was so much bigger. Take a look at the difference. So this is with the dry potassium iodide and this is with the solution, potassium iodide. We made so many more bubbles with the solution than we did with the dry ingredients. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. All right, guys, well, that was super fun. I hope you had fun keeping your observation skills sharp. I suggest you go out and use your observation skills just outside. You don't have to be experimenting with chemicals to be able to use your skills um, to observe the world around you. Go outside, smell the air, close your eyes and listen to the sounds that you can hear. Um, maybe see the different colors you can find around your house or around your yard. There are so many different things you can do to use your observation skills and to keep them sharp. All right, guys, well, we hope to see you soon at the Clay Center, and take care.